something that I like to talk about today and uh, is concerning tattoos. I know um, tattoos, tattoos are quite popular lately and uh, m uh, basically in many parts of the world lately they're so 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 common and popular um, and of course these days they are not seen as uh, you know they're not seen as uh, the way it used to be back then because back in the days people used to look at tattoos as a more of a rebellious kind of way you know for the delinquents the delinquents you know those, those uh, people who are about to go and do crimes and things like that and evil people but uh, nowadays even the good people are getting the tattoos and uh, even people in the church are getting tattoos now what are we going to say about this? Is uh, getting a tattoo a sin? Is it a sin? Because uh, it's happening and many people are wondering, should I get a tattoo or am I scared about it or what is going to happen? Now, I want us to have a biblical touch and uh, check on this aspect of tattoo and this topic of tattoo, okay? So, first and foremost, the New Testament does not say anything concerning tattoos, you know, and uh, especially concerning believers. You know, Paul has not said anything concerning uh, tattoos to believers. Therefore, we cannot say getting a tattoo is a sin because it's not mentioned. It's a uh, silence, uh, you know, just like that. But uh, this, in the Old Testament... There's one verse which really scares people and uh, is a point of controversy here. The Bible says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. In Leviticus 19.28. Hmm. So now the Bible is telling us not to make any cuttings. Tattoos are cuttings on the flesh. In the flesh. It represents, you know, it's for the dead. And you should not print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now, remember one thing. That uh, God has said this. But now, remember who it was spoken to. The children of Israel. And uh, Israel and the church are different. And uh, you may say, okay, uh, Keith, come on. This issue about tattoo is the Old Testament and we are no longer under the law. But uh, there's something that we need to check. I'm not saying uh, getting a tattoo is a sin or not. I just want us to go through the Bible, what the Bible says. Uh, the essence of why we read the Bible is so that we can be edified and we can learn, okay? So I'm not here to tell somebody if you take a tattoo or you don't take a tattoo. But uh, I want us to check what the Bible says. We have seen in the Old Testament God telling people not to take tattoos. But right now we're in the church and we're in liberty. We can do whatever we want and we cannot, you know, we can't lose our salvation. But uh, having said that, however, a Christian should follow his conviction concerning uh, this matter. How God convicts you while also respecting those who may have a different conviction. Because there are people who have a different uh, conviction and they say, it's okay, I, I can have it, no problem. And others they say, no, 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 it's, a, it's really a bad thing. Now, let me give you some general biblical uh, principles that may, may apply to getting a tattoo. If you want to get a tattoo, now these are general biblical uh, principles that you should check, okay? Uh, in accordance to what the word of God says. Now, the first thing that I like to talk about, you should uh, check what kind of tattoo am I getting? Am I getting a, a tattoo out of rebellion or am I getting a tattoo because uh, I love it? You see, the Bible tells us that uh, rebellion is bad. Rebellion is bad. I'm not talking about a tattoo drawn, you know, rebellious things. I'm talking about you're taking it so that you can rebel against maybe uh, some person or maybe someone or maybe you're, you're a kid and you're rebelling against your parents. They told you don't take tattoos and uh, you want to rebel. You want to rebel on the same. Now, rebellion is bad. See what the Bible says, Ephesians 
uh, 6 verses 1, see what the Bible says. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. Okay? So, if your parent does not want you to have a tattoo and you rebel against him, is that a sin? I believe so. Yeah, that's a sin because you're doing it out of rebellion. So, if a minor gets a tattoo in violation of uh, his or her parents' wishes, that, according to the Bible, is a sin. Now, something else I like to show you here as well. Uh, if you get a tattoo to gain attention or vain admiration from others, that is, uh, you want people to focus on you. According to the Bible, that's a sin. You want people to uh, focus on you. You want to give attention to people. Uh, of yourself to people you want people to keep on looking at you i believe according to what the bible says in first peter 3 3 let me show you it's a sin first peter 3 verses 3 if you get it for the purposes of uh, you know gaining attention is a sin what does the bible say who's adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair of wearing of gold, of putting on apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now what does this verse say? It says the outward adorning is not important as the development of inner self, and should not be the focus of a Christian. If you want people to look uh, at you, you know, to, 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 to have attention and things like that, instead of giving God the attention, instead of, uh, you know, uh, pulling people towards God, you want to pull them towards you, then according to what I'm saying, then that's a sin. Self-focus is a sin. Something else. I'm leaving this to you so that you can make your own choice. I'm not saying taking a tattoo is a sin or not. You just see what the Bible is saying. Something else, if you get a tattoo as a motivation to fit in or to stand out, you want to stand out from the crowd, you want to stand out from, uh, you know, show how much different you are from the others and, uh, you know, be noticed then you fall short of the glory of God. If a tattoo, you're getting it so that you can stand out, you can be special before your peers and before the other people, then the Bible says that's a sin. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31. See what the Bible says. Whether therefore you eat or drink, okay, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So if you're taking a tattoo so that you can glorify yourself and you can be special and you can be different and uh, people can look at you and can say, wow, this person is special. This person is high above every other person. Then uh, you're not giving God the glory. That is giving you the glory. And that, according to the Bible, is a sin. Okay? Now, something else you have to understand is that uh, your body, your body, the believer's body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The believer's body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And how much you, uh, uh, how much you modify the temple of the Holy Spirit, don't you think it matters? Is there a line that you should not cross when it comes to the temple of the Holy Spirit that is in matters of uh, mutilating the God's you know temple are you supposed to mutilate the temple of God remember this your body is not yours is where God dwells in so do you think it's just the same way we eat well and uh, 
we don't uh, you know we, we don't go out smoking and drinking and doing all those evil things against our body because uh, it's the temple of the holy spirit and we respect the temple of the holy spirit are you also not looking uh, at it in the aspect of uh, mutilating with tattoos i'm not saying is yes or no but this is what the bible says see what the bible says concerning that first corinthians First Corinthians uh, six nineteen. See what the Bible says concerning the temple of the Holy Spirit which you possess. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So make sure if you're drawing a tattoo or if you're doing something like that, ask yourself, is this one really taking care of the temple? Now, something else you have to ask yourself as you make tattoos. Uh, you have to understand that uh, being... Being a Christian, you are God's ambassadors here on earth. You are an ambassador of Christ here, okay? So we have an image to protect, an image to keep. So if you're an ambassador of a, you know, representing a different country, a different nation, are you not going to be smart so that you can uh, not ashamed where you're coming from? Should you not have a testimony? Should they not look at you and they say, wow, this guy is from Kenya. He must really uh, be from a great nation because uh, the way he looks. This guy is from uh, Israel. This guy is from Russia. This guy is from the U.S. Wow. You know, you're a bassender. But now, people should look at you and they say, this guy is from heaven. He's an, uh, a citizen of heaven. This is how he looks like. This, this is how people from heaven look like. Because you are God's ambassadors and you have an image to keep. So, you should ask yourself, does the tattoo distract our ambassadorial uh, activities or does it help on the same? If it's helping, well and good. But if it is distracting the way people are looking at you and uh, the way you are, you know, representing where you are from, you are a citizen from heaven, then uh, I believe that is not right. See what the Bible says here. See what the Bible says. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, uh, 520, see, now, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are representing him. When they look at us, they see Jesus in us. So when they look at you and they see some weird kind of looking tattoos, um, ask yourself, are they really seeing an image of Christ? Are they seeing that image? Ask yourself. I'm not condemning, neither am I endorsing. I'm just giving you the word there so that you can make your own choice according to how God convicts you. Now, something else that you have to understand is that uh, there's something else that you have to understand that uh, you have to understand that uh, if you're taking the tattoo, you must be fully convinced that it is God's will for you to get the tattoo. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 4, 14, 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, are you convinced fully that this tattoo that I'm getting is, a, you know, is a, the will of God? Are you convinced about it? If you're not convinced and you're still wondering, oh, is God really happy with this one that I put on my hand or, uh, you know, on my neck or my back or whatever you want to put your tattoo. Just if you're not fully convinced about it, then 
According to God, that's a sin. That's a sin. So now, having said that, we have to look back on uh, the verse that we were talking about, Leviticus. Leviticus uh, 19.28. Now, and you have to ask yourself, why? Why? What was the reason that... Uh, you know, God said what he said here. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Ask yourself, what was the reason behind that one back in the days? It is uh, somehow likely uh, said that uh, tattoos was a pagan practice back in the days, connected with the idolatry and a superstition. It was a probably a common, uh, you know, a, a common way or a common style for the pagans to mark their skins with the name of a false god or with a symbol honoring some, you know, some idol. And uh, because if you check today nowadays, most of the people, uh, you know, most of the designs of the tattoos. There's usually some, you know, it looks some demonic kind of thing. It looks some weird kind of shapes. And, you know, most of the people having tattoos, you'll ask yourself, oh, what is this? What on earth has this person drawn? Because it all originated from pagan worship. People used to draw their false gods and things like that back in the days. But even if it's not spoken nowadays... Is not spoken nowadays in uh, you know in in the in the New Testament. We should always understand one thing that God has said that we should be holy for He is holy. Now, when you talk about being holy, holy means separate. God says in First Peter one sixteen that be ye holy for I am holy. God wants us to be separate, and that's the same thing. This is a repetition of what he said back in the days in Leviticus 19.2. He also said, be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. Are you separated from the world or do you look like the world? You should ask yourself, if you're getting a tattoo, which is not a sin, but how do you feel the conviction in there? Are you being holy? Are you following an example of Christ? Would Christ be getting some cool tattoos if he was here? Would you be like Christ? Because we are told to be like Christ. Be like him. So do you think Christ would be taking some uh, good looking tattoos? Ask yourself. And the conclusion of this matter is that uh, getting a tattoo is not a sin. Because we are under grace. We are not under the law. We, are, we have freedom. It's not a sin. That is per se, yeah? But uh, it's a matter of Christian freedom and should be guided by biblical principles and personal convic conviction. Personal conviction. Which is rooted in love. If you feel God convicting you and telling you don't take it, please don't. If you feel it's okay, remember we have liberty. We have liberty. But I've just put this down there so that I can uh, uh, make us aware of some of the things that are hotly debated all the time. And uh, we can be able to understand because we are children of God. And if you are still not a child of God, please be saved. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it speaks about how that Christ laid his life for us so that we can be saved. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. If you believe what Jesus did at the cross was for you, and you confess it out to him and tell him, Jesus, this is what I believe, that you did all this for me, then you are saved. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So guys, hope this has been a blessing. You have been edified in one way or another. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also you can share the video so that others can be able to hear and know. And as well, you can subscribe so that you can be watching much, much more. We post about two videos every day trying to edify the body of Christ. So God bless you and have a blessed time.